So welcome back and today I thought I'd share something that I uh, built a while ago with a microcontroller and yes it's all to do with pulse width modulation and yes it's sort of to do with motors but perhaps not in the traditional sense of motors. So if I just scoot around and go to my computer cupboard as it's grandly known. So in this rather messy cupboard you can see that uh, there's a server down there in the corner which is just a little server doing very little quite honestly and then up here on the right there's my main PC and as you can see I've got an external hard disk floating around plugged into the USB 3 port but that's not the interesting bit. The interesting bit really is this bit up here above the modem you can probably see just about a fan, an extractor fan, a 120 millimeter extractor fan. So let me get a torch on that and uh, show you a bit more detail. So, with my torch now on it, you can see that it is indeed an extractor fan. And over there in the far corner, in that black little box there, if you can see it there, that little black box, that's the controller for that extractor fan. And in fact, there's one underneath as well. Uh, where my server is, so there's two extractor fans in fact in this cupboard, both controlled by that black box. And on the face of that little black box, you can just make out a little tiny circle where the temperature sensor is protruding from. That one there, that's the temperature sensor, the DS, can't remember now, something or other. And that's measuring the temperature inside this cupboard and deciding whether it's worth switching on these fans or not. But it's not just a simple switching on and switching off. No, these extractor fans are controlled via pulse width modulation so that at 25 degrees, for example, nothing happens, but at 26, they're turned on at perhaps 10% full speed. And then at 28, they might go to half speed. And at 30, they might be at full speed and so on, just as an example. Now, in fact, if I can just see some papers behind that box, let me get those out. That might be the original spec. Yes, this was the original program. The windows are right there. That was in 2012. Temperature dependent fan controller. Oh, yeah, you see. Now, already I can see from the, uh, the code listing here that this isn't an Arduino project. In 2012, I was still using or partly at least, uh, microchip controllers, so the language is... what's that written in? Oh yeah, some sort of um, basic, I think it was. Can't remember now. Yes, it's some sort of basic specific to the microcontroller. So that's the um, original code. I've obviously kept it in there for posterity. And oh, there's even a circuit driver in there. That's not the interesting bit. We're going to look at PWM, pulse width modulation, and how that fan is controlled and how we can use it for other motor type things. Right, let's go back to the old workbench. So here we have a really simple demo of pulse width modulation with this single LED uh, going up and then dimming down and going up and dimming down and so on. Now, that's not done by any kind of voltage control, this is done by the pulse width modulation. So I suppose the first thing we should do is just draw out what we mean by pulse width modulation. If we imagine a graph, this is time and this is voltage. When the pulse going to the uh, that little LED is off, then the pulse is most definitely down at zero here. When any current flows, it, it goes up to the full 5 volts, which is what you can get out of the Arduino if it's powered by 5 volts, 3.3 if it's a, a duet or something like that. Now, the thing is, if we were to just switch it on at 5 volts here and keep it going, well then it'd be on permanently. You'd have 100%. But we don't want that, of course. We want to control the brightness of the LED in this case and the speed of a motor elsewhere. So that if we have one second here. Within that one second you might only want the pulse to occur 
for say a quarter of a second and then nothing and then it goes to the next second and you get another quarter of a pulse and then nothing and so on so that way you get 25% on and 75% off which means you should end up with something like a quarter brightness or indeed a quarter speed of your motor so if we just look at the oscilloscope now we can see that as it ramps up here you can see that this mark distance is getting bigger and now it's ramping back down so the output this one here is getting smaller and smaller and smaller now it's on the 30 the fixed 30 we said right at the end just to prove that the motor we keep going around now it's back ramping up again okay let's get back to the code to do this which is only about five lines i think uh, just to see how it all hangs together Here's the code. On here we're declaring just three individual 11, which will be the PWM output pin, and then just two values, the maximum value we want to go to and zero. Now, normally you can go from zero to 255, so, so rather than 255 we've chosen 100, because to be quite honest, you can't visually see much difference between 100 and the, and the 255. So in this case, nothing happens in the setup, and then you just have two little loops look that fades from zero to the maximum with a small little delay in there and then back down again from the maximum which is 100 back down to zero and that's all it does keeps doing that the delay i've just the way that delay has been expressed it means you get more delay when it's at the very small ends because that's where you notice most difference i'll put in most of the uh, delay there and that's it there is nothing else that is all the code I'll put this at the bottom of the video again, in one of the comments or the description, um, just for reference. And, uh, well, I said you can see now that the, uh, it's still zooping up and down. Well, I say zooping, it's slowly coming up and down. It's a, it's a bit um, annoying that we get a white LED on the camera, but a red one, of course, in real life. It must be something to do with the infrared capabilities of the camera translating things. Anyway. That's all we have there. Let's move on to, now to a slightly more sophisticated, in quotes, project where we can actually control a motor rather than a light. I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting. Remember, you can leave comments down below and also click that little button that says subscribe. Okay, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.